In this presentation, we will take a look at and work a problem related to vertical analysis, sometimes called common size statements. When we think about the vertical analysis, we will be considering the analysis of the same period as opposed to horizontal analysis, where we're typically comparing period to period, one period compared to another, one year compared to the next year. In terms of a vertical analysis, we're comparing one year to itself. Here is our data. We have an income statement. We're going to start off with the income statement. We have a comparative income statement. We have the current period and the prior period. We're going to be doing a vertical analysis for each of these periods. Note that as you think through these ratio analysis, what we want to do is kind of think from scratch. What would we do if we just want to get some more information about our data and we're just trying to put together some formats to do that? The horizontal analysis is more of a straightforward type of thought for most people, I would think. In other words, the horizontal analysis that we looked at in prior presentations would be the idea that, well, why don't we take the two years of data, let's line them up line by line, so they line up side by side with the same accounts in the current period and the prior period, take the difference between the two, then we could see the change, what happened year over year with regards to performance, and then possibly take the percentage change and that would be the, one of the more intuitive ways to me to look at the data. We probably figure that out, come up with that type of analysis. The vertical analysis is a little bit less intuitive, but it makes perfect sense once we start to think through it. What we're going to do is be able to compare each line to itself, and we're going to be comparing it to basically the most important line item on the statement. In this case being the income statement, we're going to compare everything to net income. In other words, note that Everything on the income statement, everything basically in the business for, from an accounting standpoint is there in order to help to generate revenue. So what we want to do is think about every line item as it's compared to the revenue account, the sales account in this case. And also note that if we take the sales account and we subtract all the expenses, obviously the, the basic account equation on the income statement is revenue minus expenses is net income. So what we're going to do is take basically the all of the expenses as they relate to revenue and that's going to be the comparison that we're going to be making and of course if we add up then all the expenses and net income it should add up to 100 percent. it should add up to the uh to the sales number in other words the basic equation is a 229 234 minus all the expenses so if we were to add up all the expenses and net income it should add up to the total of 229 Two, three, four. So that's going to be, in our case, the 141048. I'm not going to add up the total, the subtotal. We're going to go to research and development, 11581 plus the selling and admin, 15261 plus. This is a subtotal. I'm not going to add this. Subtotal, I'm not going to add this. Other income, I'm going to actually subtract that because that's income rather than an expense. We're adding up the expenses, 27545 plus the taxes, I'm not adding the subtotal in the taxes, 15738. So that's gonna be all the expenses and the income minus the expenses is net income. So I have to add net income, 48351, and that's gonna give us our 229234. And therefore, if we take each of these line items, then we're basically taking a percentage of a total. So the total pie is of course 100% represented by the 229 two, three, four, and we're going to look at all the categories and compare them to that total. So it's a little bit backwards than we might normally see the total, which we would think is on the bottom of a lot of type of calculations when we think of like a, a pie chart type of analysis. In this case, on the income statement, of course, we're comparing everything back to the main number, the number that we're most concerned with, the number that we're looking to achieve, what all the expenses are there for, that's going to be the sales number. So keeping that in mind, we'll record this. This is also called a common size statement and that's going to be because we can compare it to other types of financial statements so note that as we see this in terms of dollar amount we cannot easily compare it to other types of businesses if i want to compare for example our little hamburger shop to mcdonald's can't do it because mcdonald's revenue will be way too high and we can't we can't compare those two things they're not the same thing they're the same thing or apples to apples as they say we need to make them a common size statement and this is the way to do that. We can do a percentage statement, represent everything as it's related to sales number, and then we could do the same thing for McDonald's, and we could basically compare the two then in a, in a much easier fashion and get some more information that we never could do if we were to, to keep everything as such a dollar amount.
So the common size numbers then for the current year, this relating to this column, are here. Now if we go through these calculations, they're just going to be comparing everything to the sales line. So obviously this 100% is simply the 229234 divided by 229234. That's 1 or 100%. And we're not comparing anything to the prior year. We'll do that next. We're just doing a vertical analysis on the current year. So the next line item is obviously the 141048 divided by the sales 229234. Oh, something happened there. Let's do that one more time. The 141048 divided by the 229234. And that's going to give us the 61.5%. Obviously, that's going to be the highest percentage when we look at a vertical analysis. Typically, it's for a company that sells inventory because the inventory is going to be the highest dollar amount of the highest expense with relation to the sales. And then we have the gross margin, which is going to be the 881836 divided by the 229234. That gives us the 38.5%, which can also be calculated as 100 minus the 61.5. 38.5%. So you can do those subtotals either way, and you can basically double check your work in that format. You can just go all the way down through this 11, 5, uh, 5, 8, 1, divided by the 229234. That's going to give us the 0.5 uh, or 5.1%. And we can keep going through this, the 15261 over the 229234. And that's going to give us the 6.7% and so on and so forth. This gives us a relation of every number to the basically, in essence, kind of the total or to the most important number, the sales number. And remember, income statement is a performance account. How are we doing over time? This is kind of like the stopwatch account. Here's we starting and we're ending. It's, it's measuring something over a time period as opposed to the balance sheet, which is only measuring as a point in time. So as we do this, what we're thinking about on all these expenses is really these are the things that we had to expend in order to generate the revenue, which is the goal. So this is the goal, this is what we're trying to do. This is what we had to expend in order to do that. Then we can go through here and we can see what our highest expenditures were. And obviously cost of goods sold will be the highest expenditure. And then we can go through and see the, the rest of the expenditures. Now note, we can then take this common size statement and compare it to other companies which have much different total dollar amounts but have similar ratios in terms of a vertical analysis. That's going to be one of the key components. Now, if we did it for the prior year, we could do the same thing. Remember that this is only being calculated based on the prior year. So if we were to do these calculations, we're just going to take the sales number by itself is obviously 100%. And then we could pick up the cost of goods sold. Same concept. We've got the 3131376 divided by the 215639. And that's going to give us our 60%. And now we can do a comparison in uh, a vertical analysis from a year to year we can we could take a look at these two numbers and start to say hmm uh, we had a bit of a change in the cost of goods sold a bit of a change in the in the gross margin but from a percentage basis we're pretty close in terms of the relationships uh, from a percentage basis and so we can compare those percentages on a common size statement from a year over year and or to multiple or, or to other different companies if we were to graph this as well, you can kind of consider this or think about this in terms of a graph and it might look something like this. And you can then give a, a pie chart and give a visual and say, look, here's basically our expenses. These are going to be the largest expenses being the cost of goods sold. And then you can break out the expenses from there. This could be a nice way to give a visual of what what it is that uh, that we're expending in relation to the gross sales number. And of course, we can do the same thing for the balance sheet now. So we're going to look at the balance sheet. We're first just going to look at the assets. So we have the same kind of setup. We have a comparative balance sheet. We have the current year and the prior year. And we're looking at the assets. What we want to do then is consider everything in this case to the most important number or to the total number. In other words, all these assets line up or add up to total assets. This is going to be the total. We're going to compare everything to it. Now, as we go through this for a company... You can also think of how you might do this personally. This is going to be very applicable to something like your investments or something like that or any type of, of asset category that you have because you can do the same type of thing and compare everything to your totals. And by doing so, you could start to compare what, what your grouping is in terms of where you're investing what you have in 
as compared to possibly someone else. And this is common in like portfolios or things like that. How much is invested in stocks? How much is invested in bonds and whatnot? And you can compare it to someone else. Well, those same principles apply here, but obviously by industry, because all of these assets that we have, we the only reason we have them is to help us generate revenue, to help us grow the business. So we want to be able to take these and compare them on a percentage basis, possibly to other types of businesses in our same industry and consider not from a dollar perspective, but a percentage perspective, how much do we have in each grouping? So if we went through that, we can say, all right, the current year, this is a common size statement uh, is going to be uh, the comparison, everything to the total now. And this kind of makes more sense or easy to calculate because the, the total, unlike on the income statement is up is on the bottom where you would expect it to be <laughs> as opposed to on the income statement where we're compared everything to the total which is basically the sales number the way we're setting that up so in this case we have the twenty thousand two eighty nine divided by the total down here which is the 375 319 that's going to give us the 5.4 percent so that means that of this total of assets of all the assets that we have we have five percent uh in cash now, remember what that what we can do with that is we can look at other companies that are in a similar industry. Like again, if we're comparing our little hamburger shop to McDonald's, we could say, well, this doesn't it doesn't help me to compare how much cash we have compared to them. That's ridiculous. But we could compare the percentage cash that they have as compared to their total assets and consider that. And you can consider this in in a stock portfolio type of thing or stocks versus bonds or investments. We could say, I don't. You know, obviously Warren Buffett has, or, you know, some famous investor has a lot more money than we do. We can't, how can we get information from what they're doing? We can't do it from a dollar amount standpoint, but we might look at their whole portfolio and say, hey, this is how much they own in stocks at least versus other things and possibly get some information uh, from that kind of analysis. And that's a similar analysis we're doing here, but on a, a business standpoint. So 53,892 over the total always comparing to the total 375 319 so that's going to give us our 14.4 we're always going to have to deal with rounding always and we got 17874 divided by the total which is 375 319 and there we have our uh, 4.8 and then of course if we do this whole thing and we go down to like say total current assets 128645 divided by the total which is the 375.319, that gives us our 34.3%, uh, which you can also get by, in essence, adding all these up, right? 5.4 plus 14.4 plus 4.8 plus 1.3 plus 4.7 plus 3.7, 34.3. So you can double check those subtotals a lot easier to do within Excel. And then we can take a look at these percentages and we can say, okay, this is how much percentage wise we have in each of our assets. In other words, if we consider this asset at the, as the total bucket, this is the percentage that we have allocated out. And we can do that for another company as well. We can say, this is the total assets they have. Maybe they have a million in total assets, but then we can consider the buckets that they're putting them in relation in relation to the total. And that can give us some information. Remember that as we look at the balance sheet, our goal here is to think about where the assets are at a point in time, as opposed to the income statement. Always keep that in mind when you're doing these types of ratios. The income statement is performance. And so we would expect hopefully revenue to go up in some way. And we would hope the expenses would go down or, or have a, a, some kind of smooth trend balance sheet. We got kind of different types of perspectives. We're trying to use our assets most efficiently and leverage the liability most efficiently. So we could do the same thing for the prior year. So we could just do the same thing. Remember, we're comparing uh, the the one year to itself, not doing anything with the two years. This is the vertical, not the horizontal. And so in this case, of course, if we if we take some liabilities this time, we go down here, 174.3. I'm not liabilities. We go down here to the other assets divided by the 321.686. And that's going to give us the 53% about. And then we could do that for one more, the 27010 uh, divided by the 321686. And that's going to give us our uh, 8.4. So we could do that for, for both of these years. And again, get some more insight on a percentage type of basis. We can also graph this and you can imagine this graph. And this is a typical kind of thing we would do for stocks and investments for personal as well. We'd say, hey, these are your total assets. 
this is basically a, a visual of the groupings that you have those in. So obviously the, the largest grouping here is the, is the non-current assets. And then you can go through and then you got short-term investments are, are uh, pretty high. Then the orange is the inventories are pretty high. And you can go through here and you can get a visual of basically what the investments are and possibly again compare these to to a visual of other companies that are in similar industries possibly you can do the same thing for the liabilities of course so same type of analysis we got the current year and the prior year we'll do the vertical analysis we're comparing to the total remember so in this case we're comparing to the total down here as we look at the liabilities and equity a couple things we want to remember one we don't we're not going to be grouping liabilities to the total liabilities so that's a common confusion we're not going to be grouping the three categories assets liabilities and equity uh, in that format we're grouping the liabilities compared to the total liability and equity and the reason we're kind of thinking that way is because note that the balancing concept is assets equal liabilities and equity so it's not like the three we're not grouping the three out assets liabilities equity three categories but two categories assets liabilities and equity why does that make sense because the liabilities and the equity represent who has claim to the assets so remember we're balancing if here of course means that this 375 319 uh, of liabilities and equity is equal to total assets and remember that the liabilities and equity simply represent who has claim to who has ownership of in essence the assets that are that are included so you can think of this as the same total asset assets number. We're basically looking at this time who has claim to those assets and all the liabilities mean third parties have claim to it. And the equity means that we, the owner has claim to it, or it's the net value of the company. So as we go through these percentages, you just, just keep that in mind that you can kind of compare this to they're, they're on the same level liabilities are all going to be compared to liabilities and equity not to total liabilities and equity is going to be compared to total liabilities and equity not to total equity and it's going to be representing who has claim uh, on a percentage basis so obviously if we took the accounts payable one or the 49049 divided by the total which is the 375319 we get the 13.3 percent so we're saying that the payables here represent 13.1% of our total liabilities and equity or our total assets, same type of thing, who has claim to the total assets. And then we could do the second one, we could say the 25,744 over the total, which is the 375,319, and we got the 6.9%. So 6.9% accrued expenses. And you can go down here and do the same thing for the the uh, equity. So 35867 over the total, the 375319. Uh, that means that 9.6% is, is claimed by the owners with relation to the liabilities and equity. And then you can go through that with the retained earnings and so on. So you got our percentages here on the liabilities and you can do that for the prior period as well. So these just represent the same calculations in these uh, numbers. And you always just want to keep in, in mind what these percentages represent. And these represent basically on a percentage basis the claim to ownership. And you can compare this uh, to other types of companies. So you can say, well, how does McDonald's do compared to our little, little hamburger shop? Do they have 11% of their total liabilities in equity or as representing total assets that's going to accounts payable? What's their representation of total stockholders equity possibly? How much is attributed to the owner, the owner's claim or the net book value as compared to the total liabilities in equity or the total assets? So these are kind of relevant uh, numbers that we can use and do comparisons with in a common size statement, meaning we can compare them to larger or smaller companies for benchmarking.